I'm going to get a glass of water. Do you want me? Mm, please. <laughs> Oh, you poor love. Sit yourself down. I'll make you something to eat. Oh, hey, wait till your name's up in lights. Eh? It'll all be worth it. I think it's time for that sneak preview anyway, don't you? Darling, I can't just turn it on like that. I need to feel the part. <laughs> well, go on, then. Give us a tune after your supper. It's not on telly. I'll think about it. Anyway, where's our Katie? She's gone to her mate's door homework. What mate? She ain't got none. Can we sit near the door, please? No problem. What difference does it make? Oh, please, I'd feel so much better if we were near the door. Thanks. <clears throat> feel like we're on a spying mission, all this cloak and dagger stuff. Yep, well, I have to be careful. I shouldn't have come here in the first place. I have the microfilm. <laughs> it's not a joke, Louise. This is what my life is like now. Are you sure it's worth the risk? Of course it is. You're my best mate. I've missed you, you know. Missed you too. Right, what are we gonna have? Who <sighs> come here? I'm sorry to rush you. Yeah, well, uh, it's not the first time tonight, is it? What? Was it no good? Well, it was fine until you started your sergeant major routine. Right, that's it. Up you get. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't expecting breakfast in bed, but talk about wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. Look. My wife is going to walk through that door any minute. Yeah, and you can still behave like a gentleman. Besides, uh, I like a bit of danger, me. I find it a right turn on. Julie. All right. All right, I'm going. You can order me a taxi. A taxi? <laughs> well, you don't expect me to walk home. Don't tell me you ain't got a number. I'm not phoning one of our cabs. Anyone might see. Here, I'll uh, give you a tenner for a taxi. I'm not taking your money off you. That really would be the final straw. It's, uh, it's not far. I'll walk. Are you sure? Yeah. I'll, um, I'll see you around. Yeah, um... I'll see you. How many more are there? It's too much stuff. I can always put some into storage. No, no, I'm only asking. Besides, this is your home now, just as much as mine. Don't want you living out of a suitcase. And we're bound to be doubled up on pots and pans and stuff. I doubt it. I left most of mine, will Ed? Right, let's get it all unpacked, then we can decide what to keep, yeah? Good idea. What are you doing home? Nothing like a nice warm welcome. Well, I thought you said you had to stay overnight. That your job depended on it. Yeah, well, I thought that you might be pleased to see me. Before she made over me going in the first place. Well, it didn't stop you though, did it? Me making a fuss? Asking you not to put your job before our marriage? If my job was more important than my marriage, I wouldn't have spent over a hundred quid in a taxi ride home. You spent hundred quid on another taxi firm? Well, I could hardly phone streetcars, could I, and get Les to bring me all the way from Wolverhampton? Well, why didn't you get a train? I want to get home at 2 o'clock in the morning, Steve. What's the big rush? That's what I want to know. Because I wanted to come home. Well, I thought you said you couldn't come home. That you had clients to entertain. Yes, well, I wanted to be with you. Oh, yeah, likely story. Steve! Well, it's a bit suspicious, you've got to admit. First of all, you're desperate to go, and then you're desperate to come home again. Yeah, well, we had a brilliant day, we did loads of business, and I just didn't want to talk shop all night, all right? So what did Carter have to say about this? Well, he wanted me to stay, obviously. Well, you usually do what he says. No, I don't. 
Shall I tell you what I think's happened? Just told you what happened. I think you and Loverboy have had a row. Why else would you get in a cab in the middle of the night? I don't believe I'm hearing this. I know you were sharing a room. No, we weren't. I phoned the hotel. I asked to be put through to your room. Only there wasn't a room in the name of MacDonald. There was a room in the name of Carter, though. An executive double, probably. Yes, and there was a room under the name of Baldwin as well, which is where I was. You what? My room was booked in Mike's name. Are you a liar? No, no, Steve, listen, Mike was meant to go, but he couldn't, so Joe asked me, therefore the rooms would be booked under Mike and Joe, wouldn't they? There's more to this than meets the eye. No, Steve, there isn't. We went out, we had a meal with clients, and then I wanted to come home to you. End of story. Oh, Steve, it is one thing having a go at me for stopping out, but having a go at me for coming home as well. I mean, that's just mad by you and your flipping standards. <sighs> Is it really that dangerous for you to go out, even in Manchester? Why do you think we moved? We changed our names. Those brothers are after you, though. They've probably given up looking for you by now. You want to bet? They want us dead. They'll never stop looking for us. It must be so awful for you. Neil, will you get used to it? You have to. Oh, I have not told you, have I? I've got diabetes. You haven't? Yeah. Found out about a couple of weeks ago. I have to have injections and everything. My God, you've had it tough. Nah. Anyway, what about you? Going out with anybody? Paul Everson keeps asking me. I don't want a boyfriend at the moment. We're good mates, though. He'd give us a lift here tonight. He's got mates in Manchester. You told him you were coming? Oh, Louise! He won't say anything. I made him swear. Well, he'd better not. We're coming again next week, actually. This new indie band, The Signs, are playing the union. I'd love to go to that. Why don't you come with us? Oh, it'd be dead easy to get a ticket. Oh, I can't. It was hard enough for me getting out tonight. Go on, we could have a brilliant time. And Paul would love to see you. Oh, all right. You're on. <sighs> I wish I'd have just stayed in Wolverhampton. Oh, babe, don't say that. I'm glad you're back. Really? Got a funny way of showing it. Do you know, if you'd race down the motorway to be with me, then I'd be really chuffed. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, what do I get? Flaming Inquisition? It's not on, Steve. Well, it's not my fault. I can't get you and Carter out my head. Well, it's about time you did. Baby, if I'd slept with someone, then you'd know about it straight away. I'd be so disgusted with myself, I'd probably give myself away, and I couldn't do that to you. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you been doing tonight? I mean, nothing. Were you waiting when I rang? Well, I was in the bath. I, I, uh, I couldn't hear the phone. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Why shouldn't I be? Because you're acting weirdy. Eh? Mind you, what's new? <sighs> We're up into the car. My congratulations, no one likes you anymore. And then the backing singer singer, bad guys, we're the very worst. Each of us contemptible, we're criticised and kirkoist. We made the big time malicious and mad. We're the very best at being ba bad. And then it just, just goes on like that. Brilliant. Oh, brilliant, yeah. Nice one, Paul. <laughs> so, have you got any more rehearsals before Saturday? It's just out of interest. Oh, I don't know a few. Good, good. I'll be able to iron out them little wrinkles. <laughs> <clears throat> Time is it, aren't you? Nearly quarter to eleven, why? Well, didn't we tell Katie to be back by half ten at the latest? Well, she's probably on her way back. Have you seen these? What? Our English school books. Sort of thing you need if you're doing your English homework around your mate's house. Mm, well, oh, I could do with a drink. Have we got any wine in, baby? Yeah, it's a bottle hoop. Hang on. Listen, uh, you've had a long day. Why don't you put your feet up? Mm, well, now that is more like it. <coughs> no, we can't go on like this, Steve. Yeah, I know. 
But this is important. Listen to me. I am listening to you. There we go. One glass of wine. You know, you like Jekyll and Hyde. I don't know what you're going to be like from one minute to the next. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, look, I'm going to change, I promise. In the meantime, why don't I run your bath and we'll go to bed? You've got to trust me, Steve. Because if we can't trust each other, then we've got nothing. Right, I'd like to propose a toast to us. Ah, to us. I have got a really good feeling about this. Yeah, and me. Just wish we didn't have this flaming court case hanging over us, that's all. Hey, hanging over Les. He's the one up in court. I'll still be called as a witness, cross-examined. Yeah, and that judge is going to believe every single word you say. To the jury believe that matters, Janice. You'll never be sure which way they'll go. Well, they're not going to believe Les, I'll tell you that for a kick-off. I'm just saying you could put the most compelling evidence in front of a jury, lock them in a room for two hours, you'd be amazed what they come out saying. Les Battersby, guilty as charged. That's what they're going to come out saying. <laughs> oh, come on, don't keep us in suspense. <clears throat> a warm home on winter's days, safe to dream of summer rays. That's good, that. Did you think of that yourself? Oh, yeah. I've been racking my brains all day. Then it came to me just like that. Do you like it? Well, I like it a lot. Oh, it's a cracker, that, isn't it? Uh, I prefer mine. Well, what's yours? My dream house is a public house. Is that right. it? Yeah. Yeah. You're right, Kelly. I'm all right. Yeah. Look, then. Standing there as a butter wouldn't melt, it makes you sick. Pull them, get to you, Les. And I'm your party here. Remanded on bail out of the job? You can't be that badly injured. You're in here supping every night. I need something to calm my nerves after my ordeal. Oh, listen to him. He's got it all sorted. Already planning what to spend compo on. All I want is justice. Nothing more, nothing less. Nobody believes you, Les. Uh, I do, actually. I'm first. Well, more fool you. You think you'd have something better to do than listen to him peddling his stupid lies? The only one peddling lies round here is them two. Hey! Not any quiet tonight, aren't we, officers? Look, just leave it, Les. We've come for a quiet drink. Can't bear any notes more like. Les. Fit anyone up today, have we? Sergeant Watts. That's enough. Don't you talk to my wife like that. Oh, yeah? And what are you going to do, eh? Beat me up. Oh, sorry, no. That's his job. I mean it, Les. Just shut it. Les, come on. Come on. Who's been in this bed? No oh, one. Well. It's not my perfume that pillar stinks of. That's blonde hair, Steve. I am waiting for an explanation. Well, it's not what you think. No! No, of course not. <gasps> Look, are, are you sure it's blonde hair? I mean, I'm not colour blind and I'm not stupid! Well, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't know how it got there. Oh, try, Steve. Please try, because if you... Look, it might be a grey hair. <gasps> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not being funny, oh, but, I mean, it happens to us all. You slept with someone in our bed. No. <gasps> don't lie to me. It's written all over your face. Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, cheated, cheated, cheated. Oh, <laughs> oh. She's here. Don't fly off the handle, please, Tommy. Sorry I'm late. What time do you call this, then? Oh, well, I decided to get the bus home all night. He didn't turn up. Just get all your homework done? Uh, yes, thanks. Have everything you need? Your English school books, pens, all your gear? Uh, um... Where have you been, Katie? And I want the truth. 
I've been with Tyrone. I knew it. What did I tell you? Well, we weren't doing anything. We're just talking, that's all. What did I tell you about seeing him? I like him. He's about the only person around here I do like. He's trouble. No, he's not. He's the one decent mate I've got around here. I don't just walk off. I'm talking to you, Katie. If you ban me from seeing him, I'll have no mates at all. What? <sighs> Sweet. Get up! Don't touch me. Cos it all makes sense now, doesn't it? Mm. Why, well, you wouldn't answer your phone. All the way home, I'm thinking about you. Worrying about you. Well, you would... I don't know what to say. Well, start! By telling me who your mystery blonde is. You don't know her. Well, how do you know her? Mm. How long has this been going on? Oh, there's nothing going on. <laughs> I only met her tonight. <laughs> Look, it was a one-off. <sighs> I regretted it as soon as it happened. I chucked her out. Did you know? What I felt <sighs> really down. You saw the state I was in when you left this morning. Don't make this my fault. I'm just trying to explain. No, you're not. You're trying to squirm out of it like the lower. Life scum that you are. Look, I thought there was something going on between you and Joe. I still do. Don't you dare accuse me of doing something after what you've just done. Look, I'm just trying to explain. When I rang the hotel and there wasn't even a room in your name, I put two and two together. I made five. I was gutted. <gasps> I've never felt so upset in my life. So you went out. You picked somebody up. He brought them back here and had sex in our bed. Look, I was upset. I was desperate. I thought me and you were finished. Well, we have now. Look, Karen, I'm not trying to excuse what I've done. No way. But I promise you, the only reason I... The only reason I slept with somebody else is because I thought you were sleeping... No! No! Have you heard yourself? You slept with someone to get back at me for something I hadn't done. Well, I didn't do this out of spite. It wasn't like that. Well, what was it like? Are you that pathetic? Because does our marriage mean nothing to you? Our marriage means everything to me. You mean everything oh, to me. You've got a funny way of showing it. Look, what I did was stupid. It was wrong. But I can make it up to you, I promise. No. Then, oh, Dave. Where are you going? I don't want to be in the same room as you. Ka Karen! Karen, don't go. Where are you going to go? Oh, we need to talk. No. Look, I've been a lunatic lately. I know that. Like tonight. I'm going to go at me after what you've done. Look, I've told you I can change, and I mean it. Well, then, tell me this. If I hadn't found out, would you have told me? I wanted to. I was too ashamed. No, not in a million years. And all the time you would have been banging on about me and Joe. I know, right? I thought, Karen. Uh, I know I've upset you. <laughs> but don't do anything drastic, please. I meant what I said. If we can't trust each other, then we've got nothing now, Kurt. Oh my way. But you can trust me. It was a one off, no, I swear. Get out of my way. Time, ladies and gentlemen, please. Safe to dream of a summer rays. Ah, oh, that's dead good, that. <laughs> dead poetic. Ah, uh, I do my best. Uh, look, do, do us a favour. You, you, your writing's better than mine, so you fill in the form, then we can pop it in the post box on the way home, can't we? Uh. Yeah, I've got a funny feeling about this, Vera. We are due a bit of up love. Yeah, where did you get this magazine from? The salon. Well, it doesn't matter what you're out in here, you're not going to win at all. Look it over, they don't know it wasn't me that bought it. Now look, it says here, closing date for entries is the 1st of May. Well, it's only beginning of April. No! The 1st of May, year 2002. It's a year out of date, this. Silly pillock. Norman, listen, thanks for what you said to Les in the pub. 
Yeah, well... No, I mean it. I know how you feel about all this, and it meant a lot to me. And what was I supposed to do? Keep stum? I had no choice. You have put me in an impossible position. I know that. I'm sorry about that, Norman. I feel disgusted with myself. Well, you shouldn't. I've joined the conspiracy, haven't I? I've gone over to the dark side. Don't be so stupid. Well, that's how I feel. It's times like this you can see how fascism caught on. Don't you think that's a slight exaggeration? No, I don't, actually. Les is a victim of police brutality. I know that because you told me. And I should be sticking up for him, but instead I stuck up for you. Oh, what? The real villain of the piece? Can you imagine how this is going to look for me if the truth ever comes out? I hold public office. Oh, right, I see. So it's all right for you to act out of self-interest, but not me. Oh, no, no. We're as bad as one another. You're a bent copper, and now I'm a bent counsellor. I'm going to bed. I'd just been to it first time I met you, remember? How could I ever forget? <laughs> Is that Karen at the bus stop? Looks like her, yeah. What's she doing? Waiting for a bus. I think she's crying. Big deal. I don't be like that. Come on, let's see if she's all right. <laughs> Karen? You're right, love? No. <sighs> What's the matter? Well, would you care? I'll chime in. I've come over here to help you. I don't know why I bothered now. I'm sorry. Have you had a row with Steve? Why don't you go back over, eh? Try and sort it out. He's right, Karen. You, you can't stay out here all night. I don't want to go back in the flat. Karen, listen. No, Janice, I've finished with him. I've left him for good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love you.